We wanted to know how long we could be immune from COVID-19 after getting the vaccine. So we reached out to Dr. Meyer Artandi with Stanford Healthcare for some answers. Great to see you. First of all, do we have a better idea how long that may last? So right now, the FDA in the United States has approved three different vaccines. We have the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, and we have the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which was just recently approved. Um, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine need two shots to work, and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine needs one shot. It takes about two weeks after the last shot of the vaccine for the body to become immune. You can still get infected in those two weeks with COVID-19. It takes those two weeks because it takes the body a while to make those B and T cells that then recognize the virus and to destroy it. Now, remember, the vaccines have not been out for a long time. The phase three trials, which are those big trials to get the vaccines approved, just started in July of 2020. So the pharmaceutical companies have only been following the patients for about eight months. So we can't really say yet how long the vaccines last because we just don't know yet. Um, the virus has only been around for a little bit more than a year, and we get new data every day. What we do know is it is much safer to get immunity through a vaccine than getting infected on purpose with the virus. Until we have better data, it's really safe to say, continue to wear masks, continue to social distance. And one nice side effect of that is I haven't seen a single case of influenza in my clinic this year, and I don't know anybody who had a cold. So it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, that's one good thing to come out of all of this. What about natural immunity for those who contracted COVID-19? How long does that last? So let's talk a little bit about the immune system again. If someone gets an infection with a virus and recovers, then the body retains a memory of that virus. And if we ever get exposed to the virus again, then there's immune response. Now, how does that work? And I always say that the immune system is really complicated. If you look at it from a really broad perspective, there are three big components. There are the antibodies that swim around in your bloodstream, they're proteins, and recognize things that are foreign and target them and neutralize them. Then you have the T cells, and they're recognized and kill foreign things. And then we have the B cells, and the B cells are actually the memory cells that then make new antibodies. Now, there was a study out there that showed how long immunity lasts. And we've been wondering that since we had the first patient recover from COVID-19. I always ask myself, so how long is this patient immune? And we told patients three months. You are safe for three months, and then you probably can get reinfected. But now the data show that it's actually much longer. The researchers looked at about 200 patients who had recovered from COVID-19 and looked at all the immune components that I just told you about. And the good news is that the B cells, the memory cells that remember and make new antibodies actually increased. Patients had fewer B cells in the first month after recovery and more B cells after six months. Also, the T cell number increased. So that's really wonderful news. Again, the virus hasn't been out a long time and we are still learning about it. For now, we can say with certainty that you're probably immune for eight months, but maybe you are immune much longer. Eight months, that's a, a mm -hmm. good length of time for sure. Another new study took a, a closer look at the possible link between obesity and the risk of severe illness. What are the findings of that study? So obesity is defined as a BMI between 25, um, excuse me, 30 and higher. Uh, BMI between 18.5 and 24.9 is normal. How's the BMI calculated? And the BMI takes into account the patient's height and the patient's weight. So, for example, let's take a five foot five person. If that person is 120 pounds, the BMI is only 20. If that person is 180 pounds, that BMI is 30, and that person is then considered obese. BMI and obesity is really common in the United States. Um, about 42% of Americans are obese. And the problem with obesity is associated with other diseases. People who are obese have a much higher risk for diabetes, heart disease, and even some cancers. 
So there was a lot of interest to see if obesity is also a risk factor for more severe COVID-19 disease. And what the researchers did is they looked at 150,000 patients, over 200 hospitals throughout the United States, and they found that patients with a BMI higher than 30 have a much higher risk for severe COVID-19. They have a higher risk of going to the hospital and then also higher risk of dying. And that risk is actually linear. The higher the BMI, the higher the risk. Patients with a BMI of 45 and higher have a 33% higher risk of going to the hospital. And once they're admitted, they have a higher risk 61% actually higher than normal people, uh, people with a normal weight who um, to die. So what this tells us is that people who are obese are at much higher risk. We need to treat them much more carefully. So we need to watch them more carefully when they get COVID-19 and they absolutely should have priority for getting the vaccine. And even more reason to pay attention to your health as well. What about the levels of zinc? Can they affect the degree of severity? So that's actually really interesting. Zinc is a um, natural element, a trace element that uh, is um, in food. And you can also take it as a supplement. I'm always a big fan of getting your um, supplement, your elements and your vitamins through a healthy diet. So if you look for zinc rich foods, oysters, red meat, poultry, chickpeas, almonds, and baked beans are pretty high in zinc. Zinc is important for many functions of the body, particularly for the immune system. And zinc also has some antiviral properties. So people who are zinc deficient have a harder time fighting infections. And many of you might be taking zinc lozenges when you get a cold. And there's actually some data that shows if you start the zinc lozenges early, you won't feel sick as long. Now, because of that, there was a lot of interest recently to look at the zinc correlation with severe COVID-19. And uh, recently, a a study out of Spain was published. And they looked at um, about 250 patients who were admitted to the COVID ward of Spanish hospitals. And they looked at the zinc level. And 23% of those patients were zinc deficient. And those 23 actually had a much more severe COVID course than patients who were not zinc deficient. Now, there's still a lot of research that needs to be done. Right now, I cannot recommend, oh, just take a ton of zinc and you'll be safe. Um, That is not what I'm saying. I'm just saying there might be some evidence that zinc might be good if you get COVID. All right. So even with that, mental note, stock up on some zinc just to make sure. Well, finally, do you think we need (laughs) to reach herd immunity before our lives return to normal, whatever that looks like. So the word herd immunity has been around a lot. And herd immunity means that enough people are immune to the virus so that the virus cannot be transmitted anymore and eventually dies out. And I recently read that herd immunity is like like an on-off switch. People think that only if we have herd immunity, the crisis is over and we are safe. Until then, there is very little immunity. Fortunately, that is absolutely not true. Herd immunity is more like a gradual process. The more people are immune, be it through vaccination or be it through um, having had the infection, the less likely it is that the virus can be transmitted. Now, um, researchers say that there is very low likelihood that we will ever reach herd immunity because of the new variant, and also because there are many people who don't want to get the vaccine. I do recommend getting the vaccine, though. It's it's a really great vaccine. So right now, we say that about 40% of Americans are immune to COVID-19 or have some level of protection because either they were vaccinated or because they were infected. And data show that people who were vaccinated actually have a much lower risk of transmitting the virus. Um, That is very exciting data that comes out that even asymptomatic infections are significantly reduced in people who are vaccinated. So I'm looking forward to the day when even though we don't have herd immunity, we can go outside again. We don't have to worry about dying, worried about having our loved ones in the hospital. And I think that this day is very close. 
I am looking forward to that day as Me well. Too. So are a lot of other people. Dr. Meyer Artandi with Stanford Healthcare. Thank you. Very welcome.